Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wacky Wednesday, a weekly series where we explore wacky deck ideas in both Standard and Modern, and this week we're taking a look at Polyraptor in Standard. This is a red-green deck built around the 8-mana Mythic Dinosaur from Rivals of Ixalan, which is a 5-5 with Enrage, which says, whenever Polyraptor is dealt damage, create a token that's a copy of Polyraptor, which will also have the same Enrage ability. And Polyraptor combines very nicely with Forerunner of the Empire, a 4-mana 1-3 that when it enters the battlefield, we can search our library for a dinosaur card and put it on top of our library, so if we don't have a Polyraptor in hand already, we can search one up. And then whenever a dinosaur enters the battlefield under our control, we may have Forerunner of the Empire deal 1 damage to each creature. So as long as you have a Forerunner of the Empire in play and play out your Polyraptor, you can make a total of 8 copies of Polyraptor in that very same turn. So the way it works is you play out Polyraptor, Forerunner of the Empire triggers, deals 1 damage to each creature, including Polyraptor and the Forerunner itself, then Polyraptor's Enrage ability will trigger, resulting in an additional copy of Polyraptor entering the battlefield, which will then also trigger the Forerunner of the Empire once again, which is a May ability, so we're not forced to use the Forerunner's ability, but in this case we will deal 1 damage to each creature, so now we will deal 1 more damage to each creature with 2 Polyraptors in play, which will result in 2 Enrage triggers from Polyraptor. So with these triggers we have to be careful because with the first Polyraptor entering the battlefield we don't want to use the Forerunner's ability, but then with the second Polyraptor entering the battlefield we will use the Forerunner's ability. So now we have four Polyraptors in play, deal one damage to each of them once again, which will result in a total of eight copies of Polyraptor, and then three damage being dealt to all creatures. So your first Polyraptor has three damage on it, your Forerunner will die, and all smaller creatures from the opponent will also be dead. So that's the powerful combo we have going on in the deck. Of course we do need to reach 8 mana, so we do have some ramp elements to make sure we can cast our Polyraptor in a timely manner. So let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with our 1 drops, where we have 4 copies of a Reckless Rage, 1 mana for an instant that deals 4 damage to a creature we don't control, and 2 damage to a creature we do control. So there is a drawback to Reckless Rage in that you do need 2 different targets, you need your own creature that you can target, and an opponent's creature that you can target before you can even cast the Reckless Rage, but otherwise it's a great and rage enabler in our deck, and most of our creatures will survive the 2 damage, so it's not a big deal. And then of course being able to deal 4 damage to an opponent's creature is also very efficient for just 1 mana. Next up we have some ramp cards, we have 4 copies of Drover the Mighty, which is a 2 mana 1 1, taps to make 1 mana of any color, and then if we have a dinosaur in play it gets plus 2 plus 2, so it will survive a reckless rage if we have a dinosaur in play. And we also have 3 copies of Druid of the Cowl, which is a 2 mana 1 3, also conveniently has enough toughness to survive Reckless Rage, and taps to add green mana to our mana pool. And then we also have 4 copies of Thunder Herd Migration, which is another ramp card. So it costs 2 mana, but as an additional cost we either have to reveal a dinosaur card from our hand, or pay 1 generic mana, so it either costs 2 mana by revealing a dinosaur, or 3 mana, and then we get to search our library for a basic land and put it into play tapped. So essentially a rampant growth as long as we can reveal a dinosaur from our hand, which is a very powerful ramp card. Then we have 3 copies of Growing Rights of Itlamok, which is a very interesting card in our deck. So it's a 3 mana legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield we can look at the top 4 cards of our library, reveal a creature and put it into our hand, and of course we do have a lot of creatures in our deck, so most of the time we will find a creature, and we're hoping to find something like a Forerunner of the Empire to set up our Polyraptor combo. And then at the end of turn, if we have 4 or more creatures in play, we get to transform Growing Rites into Cradle of the Sun, which is essentially a Gaia's Cradle, making mana for each creature we control, which is another powerful ramp effect to help us power out our Polyraptor ahead of schedule. Then we have 3 copies of Arranging Raptors, an additional dinosaur to make sure we have enough for Thunderherd Migration, but it's also very synergistic in our deck as a 3 mana 2-3 with Enrage that lets us search for a basic land and put it into play tapped, so an additional ramp effect combines very nicely with Reckless Rage and our various Enrage enablers. Then of course 4 copies of Forerunner of the Empire, which is a great Enrage enabler, can search up our Polyraptor, but in other situations we might want to search up another dinosaur instead. And Ribjaw Raptor is a great dinosaur to search up with Forerunner of the Empire, as we get a 4 mana 4 5 with Enrage that lets us draw a card, so a great way to gain card advantage in our deck. 
Then another great and rage enabler is Raging Swordtooth, a 5 mana 5-5 five five with Trample, which is no joke. And then when the Swordtooth enters the battlefield, we deal 1 damage to each creature. So that also includes the opponent's creatures, so that gives us a small sweeper effect against small token decks or merfolk decks, for example. And we're deliberately playing more copies of Raging Swordtooth than copies of Register Alpha, which is our next dinosaur which may be a surprise to some since Registrar Alpha is a very powerful dinosaur, but in our deck Raging Swordtooth just does more as a great enrage enabler, but Registrar Alpha is still very nice as a one-off, as a 5 mana 4-4 that gives other dinosaurs we control haste, and also makes a 3-3 dinosaur token with trample as it enters the battlefield, so adds a lot of power and toughness to the board, and making our future dinosaurs hasty is also very nice. And last but not least, two copies of Polyraptor. Don't want to have too many copies in our deck since it is still an 8 mana card, so you won't always be able to cast it. But uh, do want at least two copies in case they kill the first one. Then taking a look at our mana base, it's pretty simple. We've got four copies of Sheltered Thicket, which is both a mountain and a forest. Enters the battlefield tapped, but we can cycle it for two mana if we're flooding out. Four copies of Rootbound Crag. Then a whole bunch of basics, five mountains and six forests. Then two Hash Up Oasis, which we can also sacrifice to give one of our creatures plus three plus three until end of turn. And finally, another great addition from Arrivals of Ixalan is Arch of Araska, which is a land with Ascent. So as soon as we have ten or more permanents in play, we gain the City's Blessing for the rest of the game. And if we have the City's Blessing, we can pay five mana, tap the Arch to draw a card. So that's a great way to gain some card advantage, since we are a ramp deck, so sometimes we will just flood out and have access to a lot of mana. So Arch of Araska helps us mitigate that a little bit. Then taking a quick look at our sideboard, we have access to some more removal spells. We have a Savage Stomp, which is great with our dinosaurs. We have a Braid, which can also deal with artifacts. Then two copies of Struggle to Survive, which is mainly for recursive creatures like the Scarab God or Rekindling Phoenix. We can use the Survive part to shuffle them away once they're in the graveyard. Then we have two copies of Thrashing Brontodon, which is a great dino by itself, but can also be used to deal with artifacts or enchantments. Then we have a copy of Chandra's Defeat against red decks or decks running Rekindling Phoenix and Glorybringer as a cheap removal spell for them. We have two copies of Death Gorge Scavenger which is great against aggressive decks as a way to gain some life back but also against graveyard decks. Then we have Fiery Cannonade as a great sweeper that doesn't kill our own creatures and can also enable Enrage. And then we have some control cards, we have two copies of Nissa, two copies of Lifecrafter's Bestiary to draw some extra cards and Carnage Tyrant, which is difficult to answer for control decks. So if that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand looks acceptable. Could use some more lands, but we do have a Drover and a Growing Rights, which could transform. So let's say Forest Go. Alright, so hoping to find a land here so we can play a Rip John 3. Otherwise we just have to play a Growing Rights. Turn to a Danto Vanguard, so we're up against some sort of white aggro deck. Could be the blue-white enchantment deck, could be a vampire aggro deck. And Arch of Araska is a great draw, so now we can play out a Rip John Raptor, which does a good job of blocking the Danto Vanguard. Could actually also opt to play out the Forerunner of the Empire. And then next turn we can play Ribjaw Raptor. And then we ping one, the Drover will be a 3-3. And they're forced to pay for life for the Adanto Vanguard. And the question is what do we get with the Forerunner? That's also not entirely clear. I think I'm good with just playing out Ribjaw Raptor here. Since this can just block the Vanguard right away. And then maybe we can set up the Forerunner next turn, or if we find a land we can just Raging Swordtooth, which is even better. Mother of Dusk, so it looks like a Vampire deck, maybe Mono White. So we do want to try and sweep the board as soon as possible, and Mountain is great here. Since our opponent does have some Anthem effects in their deck most likely, which will put their One Toughness creatures out of Swordtooth range. So now by playing the Swordtooth we... Wipe the board, opponent can pay for to keep the vanguard around. We also draw a card with the raptor and we can still attack with it. So let's move to combat. Attack for four. Opponent decides to block with the vanguard, which is indestructible, so 
Um, they don't have to pay for life again, but we do still get to draw cards, so that's fine by us. Land number four. And Dusk. Wow, did not expect this. Uh, yeah, that's pretty effective here. It's gonna kill our entire board, including Drover of the Mighty. So we have to rebuild. Forerunner of the Empire is still not a bad follow-up here. And Thunderherd Migration, but no Dinos in hand. So I think the play is just to play out Forerunner of the Empire, maybe looking for either another Raging Surtooth or Ribjar Raptor. Let's see here. Yeah, I think we want to go with the Ribjar Raptor here. And say go. Vanquisher's Banner, so that was a reason to get the um, Raging Surtooth instead. But I think we'll still be fine here since we can still Reckless Rage if we want to. Opponent gets in. We'll block. And take four. Opponent gains two. I think the play is just to play Ripjaw Raptor and keep up Reckless Rage. Of course, dealing one damage to everything here to draw a card, hopefully hit a land. Alright. So we could get in for one, but I don't think it's worth it here. We'll just keep the Forerunner on defense for now. Say go. Hope to get some value out of this Reckless Rage. Another Danto Vanguard. Opponent gets to draw a card with the banner. That's fine. Legion's Landing. No attacks from our opponents. That's good to see. And I think we will just Reckless Rage here on one of the lifelinking tokens. Draw a card. And there's our Polyraptor. And five, six, seven. So we're one mana short of actually going through our Polyraptor combo. So that's exciting. Um, so we can just Thunderherd Migration plus Growing Rights here if we want to. I guess we should start with the Growing Rights. In case we find a Dino. We don't. We find four lands. So that's unfortunate. I guess we just play the migration with the full cost so we don't have to reveal Polyraptor. Get a forest and say go. So hopefully our Polyraptor combo is good enough here. Opponent tapping a lot of mana to sacrifice Shafat Junes. So they can attack for lethal here, but we can just block. Opponent also gets to transform Legion's Landing. So if they have a trick for one mana and uh, we let the two Adanto Vanguards through, then we're dead. But we can't afford to lose a Forerunner. And just jumping with Ribja Raptor seems bad since we might end up drawing a ton of cards with the Polyraptor combo. So I think this is a play, but we could just be dead here. Instead we go to two, draw a card. All right, so I don't hate our position here. Get to run out Polyraptor and uh, make a whole bunch of copies, so... Alright, so Forerunner triggers, say yes. Put these on the stack. Make an additional Polyraptor. Trigger, say yes. Get an additional Ribjaw Raptor trigger and two Polyraptor triggers. And now with this one we want to make sure to say no because otherwise the Forerunner dies before seeing all four Polyraptors. But then with the next one, we can say yes. And draw a total of three cards with Ribjaw Raptor, have a total of eight Polyraptors, and their opponent also lost their board. Maybe the opponent forgot to make their Adanto Vanguards indestructible, but it probably doesn't matter at this point. And we even get to attack for four. So hopefully the opponent doesn't have another Dusk to Dawn here. That would be pretty sad. But uh, otherwise we're in fine shape. We even get to transform our Cradle of the Sun here. So we can cycle our Sheltered Thicket. And Transformed Cradle with two Arches over Asuka is also a nice combo. 
I guess we should have kept one of the arches untapped just to uh, draw a card with it. And their opponent does indeed have another Dusk. So I guess we'll respond by tapping this for a whole bunch of green and then cycling a Shelter Thicket. All right, Raging Swordtooth, not a bad follow-up here. So your opponent does get to wipe the board, unfortunately. And they can cast the Dawn at some point to get their Adanto Vanguards back. So we should have drawn an extra card with the Arch here. All right, we get to untap, find Shelter Thicket. So what's the fastest way to rebuild? I guess we can just play out the Forerunner, get another Polyraptor and draw it immediately. Don't get to cast it this turn, but that's fine. So let's play Forerunner. Get Polyraptor. And then I guess we can play Druid of the Cowl. I guess we're not in a hurry here, so we can just say go and draw Polyraptor at our convenience. Don't want to play Ranging Raptors here, otherwise we shuffle away the Polyraptor if we want to search a land. Opponent makes a Vampire, which is a 2-2. And opponent casts Dawn to get all their vampires back. And casts Paladin of Atonement. Draws a card from the Vanquisher's Banner. But uh, all the opponent's creatures are just gonna die once we play Polyraptor here, so that's fine. We can just use Arch to draw a card rather than cycle Shelter Thicket. All right, so let's see if we can go through this once again. So let's play Polyraptor, tap a whole bunch of mana. Yes. Opponent's creatures die. Now we say no. And I think we say yes here. Although, I guess we could keep the Forerunner around, but then we don't have lethal next turn, so I think we just say yes here. Get a total of 8 Polyraptors once again. I think we just say go. We could even play another Ranging Raptors here, but I don't think that's necessary. And then we can draw a bunch of cards between the two Arches and the Cradle. Okatra's Monument, so our opponent can make a whole bunch of chum blockers here. But the one ones from the Okatra's Monument are not vampires, so they get wiped by Raging Swordtooth. So I think we'll be fine. Our opponent is drawing an impressive amount of cards. So our best draw here, I guess, is another Raging Swordtooth or another effect that deals one damage to the opponent's creatures. End of turn, tap this for 8 mana, 9-10. Draw a card. And draw a card. Reckless Rage, not bad. It's untap. So I guess we start by playing out a Swordtooth. Getting rid of those warrior tokens. Get a bunch more Polyraptors, but our opponent does have a few flyers we need to worry about here. So let's attack with all the dinos we can attack with. Looks like our opponent is happy chomping, so we don't need to worry about the flyers as much. Get a whole bunch more Polyraptors. And I think we can just say go here. Don't see a reason to do anything. 
so we can draw two cards with our arches and draw a card with the sheltered thickets if we want to. Our opponent may be hoping to draw into another Dusk to Dawn. Paladin of Atonement. Legion Conquistador, so opponent's got one more draw step to find a Dusk to Dawn. Otherwise, I think they're dead. And just another Conquistador. I don't think it's going to do it. So our opponent got to do their thing, we got to do our thing, and despite a timely top deck Dusk to Dawn, we still got there. On to sideboarding against mono white vampires. So the artifacts are an issue, so we definitely want our artifact removal here. So these are the cards I'm looking at. What do we take out? I don't think we need Regis or Alpha in this matchup. And I think we can shave on maybe some Ranging Raptors, maybe shave a Growing Rites, maybe we can go down on a Druid and a Reckless Rage. So let's try this configuration. I guess when bringing in our uh, 2 damage Sweeper, maybe we want Druid of the Cowl over our uh, other 2 mana ramp card. This hand is close, but we're missing a second land, so I don't think we can keep this one is missing our first land, um, so I don't think we can keep this one either, even with a scry. Alright, this looks better. Arch is tempting, but I think we bottom, just because we don't want to flood out. Alright, another Forerunner, so... We will get to search a dino with the Forerunner, which will hopefully deal with their opponent's one toughness creatures. So we do have a reasonable start here of turn 2 Druid, turn 3 Forerunner, and then turn 5 we get to wipe the board of one toughness creatures. But our opponent does have an aggressive start here. Alright, Polyraptor. Not gonna need him for a while. And yeah, I guess Druid of the Cowl is just better than Drover of the Mighty in this matchup, just because it blocks right away. So we're hoping to dodge an Anthem effect from the opponent, since that would put their one toughness creatures out of sweeper range. Ocatra's Monument is scary, but manageable with our Forerunner. An interesting attack from our opponents, definitely will block here. Alright, Raging Swordtooth. So I think we're just looking for a uh, Ribjaw Raptor with our Forerunner here. Could even consider getting a Thrashing Brontodon to blow up the monument. Could also consider getting our Ranging Raptors just to ramp a bit. But I feel like if we can just draw cards with the Ribjaw Raptor we'll be fine. And Druid of the Cow surviving Dusk to Dawn, I guess, is also reason to include it over Drover of the Mighty in this matchup. Bonan just says go, doesn't want to overextend into the Ribjaw Raptor. Um, but I think we'll still play it out here. Could also consider playing our Forerunner first. Uh, just because then we get two triggers and we get to draw two cards with Ribjaw Raptor. I guess that's reasonable. And then we can either get Ranging Raptors or the Brontodon. I think I like that here. Or I guess we can just get a second Ribjaw Raptor. Since drawing cards is never bad. So lots of options. Brontodon does answer the opponent's 5 mana artifact, which could be an issue. Alright, I'm not gonna get too greedy here and I'm just gonna get the Brontodon. Which we can also cast if our opponent somehow deals with our Druid. Could have attacked with the Forerunner, but don't really see a reason to. Mavern Fane, yep, that's uh, Fane, I guess. Opponent does attack with the Martyr, just to make a token. Uh, I think there's no reason to block here and run into a pump spell. Opponent says go. So yeah, I'm just gonna play out the Ripjaw Raptor here. It's gonna wipe the opponent's board, including the token they get from the Martyr of Dusk. 
and we get to draw two cards. Seems good. Alright, no land for the turn, but did pick up a migration. And now I think I'm fine with getting in for two. So as it turns out, Forerunner is pretty effective against the Mono White Vampires deck. And thanks to a Thrashing Brontodon, we do have a uh, potential Anthem effect covered. Opponent makes more tokens. But we can just play another Ripjaw Raptor if we want to. Draw two cards, wipe the opponent's board, and even get in for a bunch. Opponent does play another Conquistador, which is also just going to die here. Alright, I think we'll just play out the Shelter Thicket after playing another Ribjaw Raptor. Yep, seems reasonable. Opponent might have a Dusk to Dawn, but I'm still not too concerned even if they do have it. And say yes. Alright, sweet. Get in for six. And I guess we play a tapped shelter thicket. And then even have to discard a bunch. I guess we can get rid of the migration. Since next turn we can just play ranging raptors, get two lands with the enrage triggers. And then maybe even play growing rights. Alright, our opponent does have the Dusk, as predicted. And that's Legion Conquistador number 3. So they have one more in hand. Alright, what's the play? Yeah, I think we just want to set up for Polyraptor next turn. So we can just play Ranging Raptors plus Growing Rights. I guess we Ranging Raptors first to thin out the deck, increase our chances of... Uh, Finding a creature with the growing rights. So let's get a forest. And get, I guess, another forest. And then attack for two. And play out growing rights, which is going to flip right away. Find another Forerunner or a Raging Swordtooth. I guess we'll just go with the Forerunner because we do have a lot of spare mana anyways. And this gives us a bit more selection. Probably don't want to play out the third Forerunner. Opponent plays Conquistador number four. I guess they want to get more value out of their Dawn from the graveyard. But that's all fine. So I think what we'll do here is just play Polyraptor, but we're uh, only going to make four copies to keep all our three toughness creatures around. So let's make a bunch of green mana. And play Polyraptor. And just uh, deal two damage to everything. So say yes to this. Make another copy. And say yes to this as well. But then we'll say no to the additional Forerunner triggers. Just to play around another Dusk to Dawn from the opponent. Since our Forerunners are doing a good job of just killing the opponent's creatures every turn. And if the opponent takes a turn off with casting Dawn, they will just be dead. But we will get lands with the Ranging Raptors here. Alright, and we even get to attack for a bunch. And I think we just say go here. Legion's Landing is not gonna do it. And that does it sweet, managed to beat Mono White Vampires, which seems to be a pretty great matchup. So on to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw, and this hand looks perfectly keepable. We've got a turn two Drover, turn three Ripjaw, and we even have a Reckless Rage to go with it. Opponent with Forest Go, we'll play Shelter Thicket Sago, and we picked up a Thunderherd Migration, so we could even play that over the Drover, depending on what our opponent does here. All right, looks like a mono green deck so far. So I'm not too worried about a potential removal spell from our opponent. So given that we just picked up a Polyraptor, which makes the migration cheaper, I feel like getting the 3-3 Drover in play is more important than uh, playing around a potential removal spell. Opponent with an island as well, so they could be keeping up a counter spell. So we might want to play our migration instead here of playing the Growing Rights or the Ripjaw Raptor. Feel like we want to play the migration here. And that resolves, get a mountain. And I guess we can attack for one. So we're playing it a bit cautiously here, but we can still play Ripjaw Raptor and Reckless Rage in the same turn next turn if our opponent presents a creature. Thaumatic Compass instead, all right, so our opponent Looks like a ramp deck. So now might be the time to just play a Ripjaw Raptor and get in for three. So hopefully, our opponent presents a target for Reckless Rage, but it doesn't look like it. Opponent just activates the compass, looks for. A planes and a baffling end can get rid of our drover. Yep, that works. So we potentially missed out on four points with the ribjar raptor by uh, playing around a potential counter spell there. All right, for now let's just play growing rights and we brick. That's unfortunate. Play forests. Get in for four. Still two lands short of Polyraptor, and these Reckless Rages look pretty poor against their opponent. And there's Hour of Promise, alright, now we have some targets for Reckless Rage, at least. But that does mean our opponent gets to transform their Thomanic Compass here, end of turn. So let's just Reckless Rage right now. Draw a card. And I think we Reckless Rage again. Find another Reckless Rage. Another Ribjaw Raptor as well. So our opponent could be holding a Fumigate here, which is a reason not to play out both our creatures here. But if we want to pressure our opponent with the Spires in play, we are kind of forced to commit a Ripjaw Raptor. So I think we just go all in here. I guess we can attack first. Force our opponent to use the Spires. Alright. Then play another one. Hope they don't have Fumigate. All right, could have a settled the wreckage instead, which I guess we're fine with. Can just attack with everyone, and Druid becoming a land is fine as well. So, yep, yeah, let's get in there. I guess an argument not to attack is if we just play Ranging Raptors, we can transform our Growing Rights end of turn. So we'll have plenty of mana for our Polyraptor. And second main we can play Ranging Raptors. Unless we can find a Forerunner right away, I think we're in trouble. We'll see. And there's Approach. Opponent even has the Ipnu Rivulet here that can uh, mill themselves. Just a mountain to draw. So let's get in for two. A 
and then run out the Polyraptor. Get to untap, find a druid. Not in a great spot here. Can attack with both, see if they have another saddle. Otherwise we get to get in for two points. Alright, we get in for two. Play druid. Say go. And end of turn opponent can use the arch. Instead looks like something else. Pull from tomorrow, that will also do it. Opponent draw seven and then they can approach. Sir opponent on a band a ramp deck. Didn't have any creatures besides the Hour of Promise, so drawing three of our only removal spells was pretty unfortunate. So let's see if we can do any better post sideboard. It's still going to be an uphill battle since we're not splashing blue for negate in the sideboard. But uh, let's get these reckless rages out of there. A braid can potentially get rid of a compass, but I guess Brontodon is uh, going in the deck first. Uh, Ranging Raptors also looks pretty weak with uh, no creatures from the opponent. Bastiary looks okay. Savage Stomp is bad. Scavenger seems pretty poor. Carnage Tyrant could be okay. Nissa is the card we're most interested in here. Could see shaving some number of growing rights, but this is probably our best configuration for the matchup. Could see scavengers coming in, but that's about it. We want to be on the play. And this is a one lander, which I don't think we can keep. This is a bit better. And Druid will keep on top. So we can play that on turn two. Yeah, I think playing Druid on two is fine. We could wait until we can set up the best cherry, but that's a bit ambitious since we only have the one green source at the moment. Baffling ends, all right. Guess we're playing Bestiary here. Or we can Migration, which seems fine. I guess we'll pay the full price so we don't give away any information. Get the forest. And then next turn. We have to decide between the best cherry or running out a creature. Opponent's got spring, finds a plains. Alright, Brontodon can get rid of the baffling end, but only gives us a 3-3 dino, so there's really no point in doing that. We can forerunner, look for a raptors, which seems fine. It's more mana efficient than playing the best cherry here. So, do we want anything besides the Ribjaw? Yeah, we're pretty far from casting Carnage Tyrant, so I think we just have to go for Ribjaw. Hope they can't deal with the Forerunner right away. And then we can start drawing some extra cards. So, yeah, let's just play the Ribjaw. Try to hit land drops. Get to draw a card. Polyraptor, bit slow here. Let's get in for one. Supreme Will, looking at the top four. So next turn we have to decide between playing out the best Sherry or playing Brontodon, which also triggers Enrage thanks to the Forerunner. Arch of Raska is interesting since now we can play the Swordtooth, which draws us two cards with the Raptor. That might be okay. Doesn't play around Fumigate very well, but the other option, just playing Bastiary, seems a bit slow here. So yeah, I'm fine with playing out the Swordtooth, see if our opponent has a response. Looks like Supreme Will to counter. 
So we get to attack for five. And Ixalan's Binding. We can blow that up with our Brontodon. And we just drew another Ribjar Raptor. So yeah, I think the play here is play Brontodon. And with the Forerunner trigger on the stack, we're going to sacrifice a Brontodon, killing the Ixalan's Binding. So Binding goes away. And now we get two triggers from the Forerunner. And uh, we'll draw two cards. So that worked out nicely. Even get to hit our land drop and get to get in for one. And most importantly, we also get to run out our second Ribjar Raptor. So we're doing okay here, but that can quickly change as our opponent has access to approach. And Rivulet can also get them closer to casting it a second time. All right, Raging Swordtooth. So I guess we can run that out. Forces the opponent to maybe have another counter spell. Uh, the other option is just playing Ripjaw Raptor, which triggers the Forerunner as well and draws two cards. I guess playing Ripjaw Raptor is fine as well, although it's a bit less mana efficient than playing the Swordtooth. But I guess I'm down. If we draw into a land, we can still play the Best Sherry here as well, which I guess is the main argument. So let's go for it. Carnage Tyrant and Shelter Thicket, which we definitely want to play here. And I think I'm okay with attacking here. If our opponent has saddled a Rampus into Carnage Tyrant and friends. So yeah, opponent does indeed have a saddle. So let's get forests and I guess another forest. And do we still want to play the shelter thicket or do we want to cycle it at this point? I think we might have enough lands. Let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. So next turn, don't have enough mana to forerunner plus Swordtooth. So I guess we do play it. Get the city's blessing as well. And Hour of Promise. So our opponent can get to deserts if they want to. And they do. So I don't hate our spot given that our opponent only has one card left in hand. They do still have the mind in the graveyard that can draw them to. We could just set up Forerunner plus Polyraptor. Definitely like Forerunner plus Swordtooth this turn, since that wipes the board and draws us two cards. So let's start with that, I guess. And let's see, what do we want to go get? Kind of like getting the Brontodon as a hedge in case our opponent has another Ixalan's Binding. Or we can get Register Alpha to get more aggressive, which also seems reasonable. All right, let's get the Register. And then we can play the Swordtooth. Trigger once, draw a card. Trigger twice. Draw a card, get rid of the zombies. And attack for four. Alright, so if your opponent has nothing, they could just be dead next turn. Opponent with a pull for five, so that leaves them enough mana to maybe settle the wreckage once again. And they can also fumigate if they draw that. Alright, looks like it's not a fumigate. So, draw into a Brontodon. So let's see, how much mana do we have? Four, seven, plus four is eleven. So we could technically register or alpha plus Carnage Tyrant, but I'm definitely not attacking with everyone into a potential saddle. So given that we're not going with that play, 
we might as well play the Bestiary and play the Register Alpha and maybe draw a card with it, or we can 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I guess given that our opponents didn't have the Fumigate, we could just go with Polyraptor, which does draw us a whole bunch of cards and sets up lethal despite our opponent having a potential saddle here. Kind of dig that. Don't have the green mana to draw a card with Bastiary. So yeah, perhaps should have sequenced that differently, played the Polyraptor before the Bastiary, since now our opponent can counter this with a Supreme Will. But if they do, then they're just dead to the board, so I guess that's fine. So let's start drawing some extra cards. And we still have lethal if the Forerunner dies, so we can definitely get the full 8 Polyraptor tokens. So this trigger, we don't want to deal 1 damage to everything, but with the next one we do. Draw a bunch more cards, and then we can attack for 9, force the opponent to use a saddle. And then we have lethal next turn if they don't have a second saddle or fumigate. So let's get two more lands. Opponent's got the city's blessing with the arch. Three cards left in hand. And one of them is mine, so they're drawing two, looking for that fumigate or saddle. And Thomatic Compass, yep, that doesn't do much here. Alright. Ripjaw Raptor, I guess we can keep on top. It's better than a land. So, what do we want to do now? Definitely have a lot of options. So how many do we want to attack with? Our opponent's got the Spires. Opponent could also have something like a Cast Out, so I feel like attacking with four Polyraptors is enough here. And then we still have plenty back for the next turn. So let's attack with four copies. See if they have another Settled Wreckage. They do. So we get our remaining lands here. I guess we can play a Druid and draw a card with it, that seems fine. Growing Rites is nice, since that gives us a whole bunch of mana to activate our arches. And uh, yeah, I think we just call it a day. Transform Growing Rites, say go. Another Spring. And cast Mind right away. And alright, they scoop it up. So on to game three. So things worked out quite nicely there. Our uh, thrashing Brontodon very key in that game. Alright, I guess our opponent doesn't want to go through that abuse again. So they just scoop it up and we'll move on to the next match. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty good looking hand. So we'll keep. We've got a turn two a Druid, turn three Forerunner into maybe a Ripjaw Raptor with Reckless Rage as well. Opponent with Plains Sacred Cat, so this could be a Godfarer's Gift deck, or this could be the Blue White Enchantment deck. Swamp is not something I expected, Servo Exhibition, so it looks like a token kind of deck instead. So Druid of the Cowl is a pretty nice follow up here, and Forerunner of the Empire is also going to have a field day against all these tokens, so don't hate our chances here. If our druid can survive, I'll be happy. Otherwise we might be a bit slow. Opponents attacking with everyone. That's interesting. So what could they have that makes this a bad block? I guess they could have the minus two, minus two to a creature. 
uh, which would be pretty bad for us if they have it. So I think it's worth taking it here. Opponent could be bluffing, but I don't think it's worth calling here when we have two four drops we want to play. Opponent just passes and we picked up another forerunner. Well, I guess uh, it's pretty good in this matchup, so I won't complain. Let's get a Ripjaw Raptor. With the next one, I think we'll get a Swordtooth, but for now, I think getting a Ripjaw Raptor, being able to also keep up Reckless Rage, is good enough. Opponent could run the same Gambit and Bluff Attack, but instead they're going for Never. So that's gonna kill the Forerunner, they can get in for 3. But next turn we can just play the Ribjar Raptor, which does a good job of blocking. Or we can run out another Forerunner first, which is also an option. Yeah, maybe running out another Forerunner is fine here. And then we can keep back Drudo the Cowl as a blocker. I think that's better than keeping up Reckless Rage. So let's play Forerunner. So now do we want to get a Raging Swordtooth, or do we still stick with Ribjaw Raptor? Ranging Raptors is also tempting, but I think I'm gonna stick with the Ribjaw Raptor for now. No attacks. And let's see if we get to clean up these 1-1s. One Regal Caracal. Alright. So that was a potential reason to get the Swordtooth as well. Don't think we'll see any attacks. And now we can just go Ripjaw plus Reckless Rage to clean up all the opponent's creatures. Play Forests. Play Reckless Rage. And draw another card. I guess we should have waited with playing the forest there, but let's get in for one. So we're in a great spot here. Opponent's got two cards in hand, a uh, return in the graveyard, but that's about it. Another Caracal we can deal with. Let's see, we can go Forerunner plus Ranging Raptors here. Seems good. And this Forerunner perhaps should get a Swordtooth, but I kind of want to hide the fact that we have a Swordtooth in our deck. So I guess we'll get a Regisaur Alpha and then play Ranging Raptors. So here if we want to make sure to draw the Regisaur Alpha, we have to stack the Ribjaw Raptor trigger and the Ranging Raptor trigger correctly so that we draw first and then search for a basic land afterwards. Typically you would want to search the land first with the raptors, just to thin out the deck when you go draw with the Ripjaw Raptor trigger, but now we want to make sure to draw the top card first. So click on Ranging Raptor first, so that we resolve the Ribjaw Raptor ability first. Draw the Regisaur, then search the land. Get a Mountain. And trigger once again. And now we want to get the land before drawing the card. So get the forest and then draw the card. Alright, and we even get to attack here with the Ribjaw. And I think we'll also attack with the Forerunner. I'm fine trading for the Caracal here. Opponent does accept the trade. Falls to 18. And we still have a very good hand as we can go with the Polyraptor combo next turn. If we had more mana, we could even play Regisaur and Polyraptor in the same turn, give all the tokens haste and just kill our opponent on the spot. Opponent with a return makes a zombie, but that's not gonna save them here. I think we just slam Polyraptor. Might not be the correct play, but everyone wants to see it. So trigger the Forerunner, get a whole bunch of triggers. an additional Polyraptor. The zombie from our opponent is gone. This one we don't want to. And the next one I think we... Let's see. I guess we can say no 
and keep our druids and forerunner and ranging raptors around. I think four polyraptors is probably enough. And our opponent agrees, so we get to go to sideboarding against the black-white tokens. So what we want to bring in, for sure, fiery cannonade looks great. Opponent could have some black or white enchantments we need to deal with. Savage Stomp looks okay as well for Regal Caracal. Nothing really that I want besides these cards. And I can see cutting a growing rights. And yeah, I guess we do want a Savage Stomp. Maybe take out another growing rights for it. Try this. Don't want to overboard. Our deck seems pretty well set up for the matchup already with all our one damage effects. And this hand looks acceptable. A no two mana ramp card, but we do have the Wombo combo. Alright, let's just play a tapped crack, say go. Opponent with Servo Exhibition. Reckless Rage can be nice. Let's just play Forest, say go. So if our opponent has an early Anthem effect, we could be in trouble. Hidden Stockpile, I guess we should have seen that coming and brought in our Brontodon. But Brontodon might not even be necessary against Stockpile since we can just wipe the board every turn with Forerunner. Let's draw. Find Sheltered Thickets. We're just gonna run out the Growing Rites here. Maybe try to find a Mana Creature or a Raging Swordtooth. And yep. There's a Forerunner and a Raging Swordtooth. think we go with the Swordtooth here. So we can curve Ribjaw Raptor into Swordtooth. And that's also pretty difficult to beat for our opponent. They didn't see it in game 1, despite us having 4 copies in the main deck. But uh, maybe now they realize what's happening to them. Anointer Priest, yep, that's fine. And Sacred Cat. Opponent gets in for two. So I fully expect Ribjaw Raptor to die should we play it. So we might be better off actually waiting and playing the Forerunner first. And then we can play Ribjaw Raptor and Reckless Rage in the same turn. Get some value out of it. Opponent is crying with a stockpile every turn. Now they can start gaining life with the Anointer Priest as well. So yeah, I guess I'm down with playing the Forerunner. And then we can either get a second sword tooth or another ribjaw raptor. Don't think we need ranging raptor. Polyraptor's still pretty far away. Don't really need regisaur. I guess we go with raging sword tooth here, just as insurance. But the plan is to play ribjaw raptor first. Had I seen anointer priest in the first game, I would have put two and two together and assumed their opponent was on a an anointed procession deck. Seems like a pretty free attack for our opponent, given our dinosaur situation. So I think I will block here on the Sacred Cat. So we fall to 13. Opponent gets a stockpile trigger. Yeah, I think we just run out uh, Raptor here. Opponent with cast out on the Forerunner in response, it looks like. That's fine. So, do we want to use Reckless Rage now or keep it for a potential Regal Caracal from the opponent? I think we keep it. If our opponent plays another removal spell on the Raptor next turn, I might fire off the Reckless Rage, but for now, I think I'm okay waiting. I guess the reason to do it in our turn is Hidden Stockpile. I guess they can just sacrifice whichever one we block. So, that's fine. So our opponent will sacrifice the one we blocked to scry one. So we fall to 11. And end of turn, with this on the stack, I think we want to Reckless Rage. And draw a card. Hope the opponent doesn't have a Fatal Push here. Alright, they're just gonna sack it. We do still get to draw a card with Ripjaw Raptor because Reckless Rage had two targets when we cast it. And as long as one of the targets is still valid, the spell will resolve. So we do get to draw with Ripjaw Raptor. Now we get to untap. And migration is nice, but we're just going to play this tapped, I think. 
play a sword tooth and draw a card, get in for four. Does our opponent have a trick? Nope, they're just sacking their servos to stockpile to keep scrying. They're probably looking for a pretty specific card at this point. So let's attack for four. And we might see something like Fumigate soon. Instead, Anointed Processions, our opponent setting up for next turn. They don't have land number five. We could pretty safely commit the Ranging Raptors, I think, and then wait on the Swordtooth until after they make a bunch of tokens. So this turn we can Migration, revealing Ranging Raptors. And then play Ranging Raptors. And attack for nine. And still have pretty good cards left, in case our opponent does have a Sweeper. Another hidden stockpile, so it might be too late. Opponent embalms Sacred Cat, which does make two lovely cat tokens. And they're gonna sack one to the stockpile, so I think this is game. Opponent can make a whole bunch of servos, but that doesn't matter in the face of another Raging Swordtooth. Alright, sweet, we got uh, GG's from our opponent, and that'll do it. I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series, so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.